Okay, I'm back in the booth. It's been sitting in the booth about a week. As you can see, it's a lot of dust on it. But I'm finna go ahead and cut and buff it. I gotta sand these rounds out. There's one here, a little small one there. There's one there, also a little small sag here. Go ahead and cut and buff it. Let me show you what I'm gonna be using to do the cut and buff. When you're cutting and buffing, you can either do it by hand, such as give you some blocks. It's a hard block here, or you can get a soft block and sandpaper but I'm going to be using a DA it runs by air it's a 5 inch dyno braid it's the same it's 5 inch also also I got this soft pad it's an interface pad I think I'm going to start off with this hard pad then once I move up on grit I'm gonna change over to this soft pad. But let me see. This the grid I'm gonna use here. I'm gonna start off with. I might use a thousand for the for the runs. Then I'm gonna work my way on up with uh I got some 1500 here. I also got some 2000. That's how the pads look. Then I also got some 3,000. When you're buffing, cutting and buffing, well, it's just me. I'd rather sand longer than be buffing longer. So that's saying you want to try to get all your deep scratches out before you start buffing. Because you have a better chance of messing up your paint when you're buffing than sanding. So it's best to start off with a high grit, high as you can. You know, it all it all depends on how much your orange peel is. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little orange peel there. But I should be able to get all that out with fifteen hundred. But I'm gonna use this one thousand, like I said, just to get the runs out. So we're finna go ahead and get set up with my DA. I'm gonna hook it up. I'm gonna cut it back on. I use. I'm a hand sand them run, so I grab some 1500. I'm gonna use a hard block. I was gonna use the DA, but since it ain't number three, three or four, I'm gonna go ahead and hand sand it. So what you wanna do, you wanna go ahead and take your sandpaper, drop it in some water. You wanna make sure the water clean because you don't want no dirt or nothing up in it because you'll scratch up the paint. Also, since it's been sitting up, I'm gonna go ahead and blow it off, blow all that dust in stuff off of it because it'll scratch the paint up also also you get you a microfiber cloth so you have something to wipe it down Take our block and sandpaper 1500. Make sure you keep it flat. You just want to go back and forth like this over it. 
You don't want to try to knock it all down at once. You want to wipe it off and look at it. Make sure you ain't going too far because it all depends on how much clear you put on it. I put four coats of clear on this here, so it should be good. You see it's coming off already to run. Couple of more passes, it should be gone. There you have it, 1500. That's all it took. All right, once you get your runs. I'm going to go ahead and wipe it down. Then you can see what you're working with. Once that dry, I'm going to cut it back on and show you what it's going to look like once I wet sand the whole car. Okay, this is how it's going to look once it's dry. It's going to be a dull surface. That 1500 pretty much tucked down the orange peel and everything. So. I'm going to go straight to 1500 I'm going to skip the 1000 because I don't see no need for it. Because it's slight orange peel. There ain't that much orange peel in it. But that's how it's going to look. Once I sand the whole car. I'm going to start on the hood. But I'm going to go ahead and take my DA. So I'm going to skip this 1000 This 1000 here. I got it marked on my boxes. This is 1500. This is 2000. And this is 3000. A lot of people might say 3000 is pointless, but it'll remove the 2000 scratches and it'll make your buffing go a lot faster. So let me get set up. I'm going to cut you back on. I think I'm going to go with this DA here. The pad look a lot better than this one here. But I was just going to go with the hard pad first with 1000, 1000 grit. But since my orange peel is real slight, ain't that much orange peel and the surface is already pretty much flat. So I think I'll go straight to the 3M hook it soft interface of this pad. The pad just go right on top top of that hold on one second you see how the pad just sit on top of the hard pad see it's soft you got a little give so if you do hit a little corner you won't dig into it but once you put the inner face pad on just go ahead and put your sanding pad on got the sandpaper attached then what what you gonna need, I got a clean spray bottle with number water in it. I'm gonna keep my surface wet up with this water here. But you can get your DA with a water attachment, but I don't got none, so I'm gonna use a regular DA. Let me get it connected with the hose. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting and buffing this side here. But what you need to do, get your spray bottle, just mix some water on, just on the surface. It ain't got to be that much, just enough to keep the sandpaper wet. Then you take your DA. Okay, once I get through with the DA, I usually just take my hard block with some 1500 on it. I just lightly go back over it with this real quick. If you ain't too comfortable with the machine, you might want to go ahead and do it around here with your hand. Because you can burn this paint real quick. 
if you ain't comfortable, you got experience with the DA. But you can just get your some sandpaper and do it by hand. Like up in here too. Once you got the sanding taken care of, you want to go ahead and get your rag and wipe it off. You're going to have to let it dry before you can be able to inspect it. And you'll be able to see where you need to re-sand because I'm pretty sure I still got some orange peel that I need to knock down. So you're going to have to wait till it dry and then you'll be able to see it. All right, the panel done dried. Let me show you the orange peel and the little imperfections. You can see it right here. I gotta bring this down some more. You need to look like this here. It's flat. Got another imperfection here and here. Also right here. You can see the orange peel. It's a big area here. So I'm just gonna take my 1500 on my block and go back over that, knock it on down. I just wanted to show you on this door and on this panel here where you can see the imperfections a lot better. See the orange peel? That was a piece of trash that was in the clear. I gotta knock all that down and look along the side of the door. You can see where I didn't bring it down far enough. But up here, I brought it down far enough. But look right here. Let me take care of that. I'm gonna cut you back on. I ain't even worrying about buffing this down here because it's gonna be some trim at the bottom of it. So I left that alone. Also, up in here, I ain't gonna worry about cutting and buffing that. That neither. Also back here with a quarter top. I'm not gonna cut and buff this part here. I'm gonna stop it right here because the quarter top on on top of this, so ain't no need to cut any boy from that. But I done sanded the roof. I pretty much got everything sanded. This spot back here is still drying up. We done completely sanded the entire car with the 1500. So it's now to move up on grit. We'll go with 2000. Just to remove the 1500 sand scratches.
Finished up with the 3000 grit, wet sanding. What you want to do now, you want to go ahead and get your rag and wipe everything down. Then you'll be ready to go ahead and start buffing it. It should be a dull surface, but the 3000 kind of brought some of the shine back. But it ain't going to be shining, but it's going to be shining than the 2000 grit. You want to take your buffer and you want to go into the edge. You don't want to come back this way because it, it could get hung up and it could burn your paint. So you want to go into it because it's going to be spinning clockwise. But I'm just going to put some on here real quick. Try to keep the buffer, your pad flat, but some spots you ain't gonna be able to keep from it, like around right here. You gonna have to kind of angle it, but it's gonna be angled just a little bit. But you don't want to have it angled too crazy. But you wanna go ahead and wipe it on there so it won't start flying anywhere. This buffer here, it's pretty good. It's like you want to put your buff on there and then start it up. You see how the RPMs drop once I pull it up off the surface. That's good. Because they can drop, then I can put it back on there. You know, just keep doing it. They don't raise up. It's a pretty good buffer from Hopper Freight. All right, let's get started.
All right, let me get a dry cloth and you just wipe it off. See how easy that was. This is just one pass with the compound. That's why I say I'd rather sand more than buff less. I went all the way up to 3,000, so it's going to buff to a shine a lot quicker than if you're stopping at 1,500. I still got to do step two and step three, so it's going to bring it on out.
All right. Just go ahead and wipe all the residue off. And you should be good to go. Stop.